Let's start with this remaining part, which we have from unit one. Fill mm -hmm. word at yeah. So a starting part of CPC just talks about jurisdiction and all the other things, right? Like what is CPC all about? Jurisdiction and all those things are given. Now, when we are aware what jurisdiction is, right? That there are so many different types of jurisdiction. Next question that comes to our mind is place of suits. Where is it that we would actually file the case? In which court we would file? That is another thing. So those provisions are given in sections 15 to 20 of CPC. And then we have another part, which is transfer of cases. Okay, so once you file a case in a certain court, is it possible to actually get it transferred in a different court for maybe multiple reasons? Is it possible or not? That's given in sections 22 to 25. Okay, now when we talk about place of suits, right, it talks about courts in which suits to be instituted. We know there is something called as territorial jurisdiction something called as pecuniary jurisdiction, right? So many different types of jurisdictions are there. So considering all those different types of jurisdictions, we need to file the case in the court of lowest grade competent to try it, right? We need to file when we are filing the initial case, we need to file it in the lower court. After that, we have options like first appeal, second appeal, review, revision, so many things are there still. So when we are filing the case at first, we need to file it in the court of lowest grade. Sometimes it may happen that the legislation itself is mentioning name of the court also. Like if you see uh, for trust, okay, trust act, you will see that it mentions clearly that case needs to be filed in a uh, city civil court. Okay, so this civil code or something will be mentioned, like court name also will be mentioned. That's a different case, but otherwise for general matters, where it's not given in the legislation, we will file it in this lowest, lowest grade, which is competent to try the matter. That is provided in uh, section 15. Okay, so where we would file the case. And the main reason is because we want to reduce burden of higher courts because they also need to look at appeals and other matters. So we want to reduce their burden. If a lower court is competent to try the matter, let them try it. That's the main logic for section 15. Okay. Now in this entire part place of suits, we have these uh, sections which talks about like 16 to 18, it talks about suits related to immovable property. Where is it that you will file a case where matter is related to immovable property? When we say immovable property, it may include a lot of different things. Like it may be rent or profits, recovery of rent. It may be for certain rent control matters. Cases are filed, eviction, those may be there. It may be partition of immovable property between maybe two brothers, between two relatives. It may be foreclosure, sale or redemption in case of mortgage. Okay, so in case a property is given on mortgage. So what may happen? What are the possibilities when a property is given on mortgage? Uh, like what is the condition in case of a mortgage? For mortgage, it's like immovable property only, right? We get provisions under transfer of property. Yeah. Right? So it basically mm -hmm. says that you keep the property like as a security that in case I'm not able to repay the amount also, you have the property. But what will you do with the property? Either you may decide that, okay, I'll keep the property only. Or you may decide that, no, I want to sell the property and recover the amount, right? All those matters also would fall under this only because it's related to immovable property again. So foreclosure, sale, redemption in case of mortgage, like you are able to uh, 
pay the money so you want to redeem it right redeem we redeem some coupon codes and stuff right same ways we redeem the mortgage property those things would fall under this one or it may be determination of any other right as to interest of immovable property who is having the proper authority to enjoy an immovable property who is having the right to interest on immovable property it may be compensation for wrong to immovable property right someone may have caused some loss or damage for that compensation needs to be paid or recovery of movable property actually under uh, the strict or attachment so there are so many different situations wherein it talks about where cases to be filed okay subject to pecuniary and other limitations prescribed by law pecuniary as in related to money other limitations as in sometimes the legislation only might say for this matter case has to go to civil court case has to go to court of small causes like that it may be specified so whatever limitations are there considering those limitations we need to file the case related to immovable property in a court in whose jurisdiction the property is situated if the immovable property is located in bangalore in the court which is there in bangalore we need to file the case that is the first thing where the immovable property is located that place only we need to file the case yeah yeah or where relief sought entirely object person the court within whose local remit or jurisdiction the defendant actually or uh, voluntarily resides sometimes it may happen that the property is you know provided that should be for some kind of compensation for some sort of relief if i'm filing the case it's not for vision of the property or something but it is related to some kind of compensation or some other type of relief that i want to obtain there i may file the case in a court within whose local jurisdiction the defendant is residing okay so for immovable properties first of all we may file the case within whose local limits the property is situated or if we want to obtain some amount of compensation or reliefs related to immovable mm -hmm. property we will file it in a court where the defendant is residing voluntarily or actually is it clear yeah uh, <clears throat> recently there was one case yeah uh, which which got a comment uh, from the judge saying that it it was applied uh, the property was in uh, mysore hmm. and also uh, other two properties were in bangalore hmm. and jointly the case was filed uh, uh, for both the property in mysore and hmm. uh, bangalore hmm. and the judge dismissed saying that uh, this is not the right court for no. uh, where uh, case was filed bangalore or mysore in mysore in mysore mysore it was filed okay what judge said yeah, they yeah he he said like either you take back the case hmm. and or else we, we are going to dismiss it okay yeah so we would come to that also this is the second one suits for immovable yeah. property this is like where property is like one property located in one place it's very clear right. there you file the case or if you want compensation or relief where the defendant is residing there you file because defendant is the one who would provide you compensation but yeah the one that you mentioned it falls under section 17 of the legislation which says suit for immovable property which is situated within jurisdiction of different courts it's not just one area that we can specify but there may be multiple properties involved one in bangalore one in mysore where to file the case in such a case in right. such matters it has mentioned that it can be filed in any court within the local limits of whose jurisdiction any portion of the properties is situated in such cases because there are like two places which are involved mm -hmm. you file the case either in bangalore or either in mysore but then like you said from mysore just said you either take back the case or we will dismiss why did the judge yeah. say mm -hmm. it because 
in respect of value of the subject matter of the suit, the entire claim is cognizable by such court. You are entitled to mm -hmm. file the case in either of the places, Mysore or Bangalore. But if you decide mm -hmm. to file the case in Mysore, you also need to consider that it's not just about territorial jurisdiction. We also have something called as pecuniary jurisdiction. Money-wise, also, mm -hmm. we need to see that both these two, three properties taken together, entire value of mm -hmm. this suit, right? So value of the subject matter is not just about one property. Two or more properties are involved. Mm -hmm. Considering everything, whatever is the pecuniary value coming, is the court in Mysore entitled to try that matter or not? Okay, it should not be just we are mm -hmm. considering the Mysore property, everything should be considered. So maybe there was something like this wherein pecuniary jurisdiction was not matching or might be the matter was something wherein legislation specifically talks about a certain court that this court is having the jurisdiction. Anything that you remember what like what reason was provided by the judge? Oh. Uh no ma'am I, I will check with my father was uh, discussing on the same uh, mm -hmm. i need to check mm -hmm. yeah it, it yeah. might be something related to that only right pecuniary was not there or maybe yeah. the legislation itself says mm -hmm. that so this is the second option mm -hmm. which we have where it's coming under multiple jurisdictions okay Next one is place of institution of suit where local limits of jurisdiction of court are uncertain. So where it is alleged that uh, alleged to be uncertain within local limits of the property is situated. So where it is uncertain within the local limits within which two or more courts of property is situated any of the courts may if it is satisfied that there is a ground for the alleged uncertainty record a statement to that effect and thereupon proceed to entertain and dispose of any suit relating to that property and its decree in the suit shall have the same effect as if the property were situated within the local limits of its jurisdiction provided that the suit is one with respect to which court is competent with regard to nature and value. Sometimes it may happen that it may not be that easy to decide which is the right court uh, to try the matter, right? Its jurisdiction of courts might be uncertain because the matter may be that complicated. In such cases where it's uncertain, it cannot be decided for sure which court should be having the jurisdiction. We are just confused. In such cases, right, any of those courts may take up the matter and they may take into consideration these other jurisdictions like pecuniary jurisdiction, subject matter jurisdiction. They need to consider those things. And if the case is fitting with their jurisdiction, they can take up the matter because there is confusion anyways, right, which court would take up. So one court can take up the matter and give a proper decision with regard to it. So this is where we are confused with regard to which court is having the right jurisdiction. So over here, any court may take up the matter and give a decision. Yeah. Where a statement has not been recorded, like we said, right? statement should be recorded. If it is not recorded and an objection is taken before an appellate or revisional court, that a decree or order of a suit relating to such property was made by a court not having jurisdiction where property is situated shall not allow objection unless it is of the opinion that there was at the time of institution of suit no reasonable ground for uncertainty as to the court having jurisdiction with respect thereto. So unnecessarily appellate or revisional court as in the higher court should not interfere unless and until they find like a valid reason. Okay, there was reasonable ground for uncertainty. They would not entertain the matter. Okay, so consequent to failure of justice. So providing justice is the main thing. Unnecessarily, uh, higher courts would not interfere unless and until they see like a valid reason. So for removable property, we basically have three sections, 16, 17, and 18. 16 is where it's just one property. You go to the place where property is located. Go to that same court. 
or if you want compensation or relief you go to the court where defendant is residing 17 is where two more two or more courts are having jurisdiction in such case you can go to either of the courts but we need to consider other type of jurisdictions also if there is uncertainty with regard to the jurisdiction any of the courts may take up the matter because anyways there is confusion so they would take up the matter and they would give a decision with regard to it okay this is relating to immovable property is this part clear yes yeah so immovable property we have three sections okay section 19 deals with yeah, suits related to compensation for wrongs and movable property yeah. so how is section 17 and 19 different uh, 17 uh, 17 also talks about compensation or reliefs but it is with regard to immovable property but 19 yeah, is compensation property. for wrong committed like in case of torts we have right in case of contracts it may be a wrong so compensation for wrongs or movable property for those matters section 19 makes the provision section 19 for compensation so where a suit is for compensation for wrong done to a person or to movable property if the wrong has been done within local limits of jurisdiction of one court and the defendant resides or carries on business or personally works there for gain within the local limits of of the jurisdiction of another court the suit may be instituted at either of the places defendant is residing somewhere or maybe he is working there and cause of action has taken place in some other place in such case either of the places plaintiff can file the case okay if the wrong was caused in delhi and the person carries on his business in Bangalore, you either file it in Delhi or Bangalore. It depends on the plaintiff, basically. He can take a decision for that. This is for compensation for wrong to person or to movable property. This is clear, right? Section 19. Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. So these provisions are not that difficult, just that we need to remember, right? So many different... Uh, provisions are there for immovable property, movable property, all those things. So usually the common thing is like wherever the defendant is residing there, we can uh, file the case because defendant is the one who will be uh, providing this compensation or relief that we are claiming. So section 19 is related to compensation. For wrongs or immovable property section 20 deals with suits related to other matter we just classify two things immovable property or wrongs or movable property what about all the other multiple types of civil suits that may take place so for that we have section 20 it talks about other matters whatever is not included in this four sections so section 20 says for every suit shall be instituted in a court within whose local limits of the jurisdiction, the defendant, okay, where the defendant is residing, you may file the case in that particular place. Or if there are multiple defendants, where any of the defendant resides, there you may file the case. Or where cause of action is taking place, there you file. If someone has caused you some loss, harm, or some cause of action, taking place you can file the case in that particular area or where the defendant is residing or where any of the reside defendants are residing or they are carrying on their business this is for any other matter which do not fall under those previous two classifications that we have mentioned mm -hmm. okay so this is related to place of suit where we would find the case we just have this uh, five sections three then four five three for immovable property then we have other ones for movable or for compensation and last one for any other matter which is not covered there okay so this is place of suit sections 
15 to 20 of the legislation. Mm -hmm. Then we have transfer of cases. Okay, many a times a case is filed. After that, parties want to get the case transferred. Okay, get the case mm -hmm. transferred somewhere else. So we will see that part where we have from sections 22 to 25 of the legislation. Transfer of suits. Now, usually transfers may be in order to uh, the person, right? Usually like plaintiff would be the one who is filing the case. So he will not ask for transfers as such. It will be the defendant who would approach that, get the case transferred and so and so forth. So defendant need to provide some valid justifications as to why he wants that the case should be transferred to some other court. Okay, and mm -hmm. if the court is satisfied, court may allow that, okay, fine, this case may be transferred to so-and-so court as requested by the defendant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so over here we have this one that power to transfer suits which may be instituted in more than one court. Sometimes it may happen that there is one cause of action taking place. We have two options like the one you were saying in Mysore or in Bangalore. We have two options mm -hmm. to file the case in either of the courts. So in such matters, when it may be instituted in more than one court, in such matters, power to transfer suits. Mm -hmm. So it says where a suit may be instituted in any one of two or more courts and is instituted in one of such courts. Like you said, it was instituted in Mysore. It was instituted mm -hmm. by the plaintiff, right? Plaintiff took the decision. Yeah, right. After that, what happens is any defendant after notice to the other parties may at the earliest possible opportunity and in all cases where issues are settled at or before such settlement apply to have the suit transferred to another case. Before the get matter gets settled or before the judgment comes, right? The defendant should at as early as possible apply and he may say that it's very much inconvenient for me to go and appear there in my soul. Rather, case should be transferred in Bangalore because the other party also works. <coughs> maybe. Right? So he will apply and he will say that the suit should be transferred to the other court. Hmm. And the court to which such application is made. If the application was made in Bangalore, after considering objections of the other parties, if any, shall determine where the case should be filed. If the other party says that, no, I was previously working in Bangalore, but because now there is lockdown and everything, I moved to my hometown. So both the parties would be heard, objections would be heard, and after that court will take a decision which court is better, where the case should continue. Okay, so can, this, yeah. uh, can this be requested in the same suit what being filed? Or they have to go with a new appeal to the court? Actually, the same suit. Yeah, say same suit as in it will not be same suit because if the party filed in Mysore, request mm -hmm. for transfer has to be given to this other court. So it would be, you know, a different case. Only you, We get a different case actually, transfer suit. It is called as transfer suit only. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, defendant has to find a new appeal. Yeah, new new in transfer the suit he will find. Okay, okay. Okay, so this is where there are just two or more courts where case can be filed. Party would go to the other court and party would file a case that this uh, should be transferred. Now, next one is uh, to what court application license is not important actually. General power of transfer and withdrawal. Okay, general power of transfer and withdrawal. Sometimes we even uh, get cases which is like withdrawal application. So party would file a case. After that, party would be like, no, I want to withdraw this case. I don't want to continue with it. So withdrawal is filed mm -hmm. by the 
or plaintiff, but transfer would be filed by the defendant. Okay, so this is general power of transfer and withdrawal. On the application of any of the parties or after notice to the parties and after hearing such, uh, such of them as desired to be heard or of its own motion without such notice, the high court or the district court may at any stage transfer any suit, appeal or other proceeding which is there with some subordinate court. It may even withdraw any suit, appeal or any other proceeding lying there with a subordinate court. And try to dispose of the same, transfer the same for trial and disposal to any court subordinate to it, competent to try it and dispose of the same or retransfer the same for trial and disposal to the court from where it was withdrawn. Where any suit or proceeding has been transferred or withdrawn, the court which is thereafter to try or dispose, it may start with initials. So basically we can file, usually these uh, transfer applications are filed to a higher court. Okay, when a, such an application is filed, court would look into the matter, okay? When case is filed for transfer of suit, appeal or any other proceeding, revision, review, appeal, whatsoever it is, court would look into the matter, court will hear the parties. If the party has submitted an application that they want to raise some objections or something, court would entertain it. Otherwise, also court may hear the parties. Everything is will be taken into consideration. After that, they would take a decision regarding transfer or withdrawal. So court may say that transfer this matter to so-and-so other court. Let this court decide the matter. Sometimes it may happen that court may say that no, where the court case was lying, let that court only uh, take a decision. Okay, so this transfers may take place and when it is happening, maybe a case was instituted. We have studied when institution of suit, how the process starts. Maybe in a lower court, the suit was instituted after maybe two months parties applied for transfer. At this stage, what happens is the new court where the application got transferred, they may start with the process from the starting or they may continue from where uh, at the stage where it was pending, right? So starting only they can continue or some two, three stages, whatever was gone, gone from the remaining part also, they can continue. So this is like a general power of transfer and withdrawal wherein court would look into the matter if there are valid enough reasons that court is convinced, they would allow transfer or withdrawal of applications as well. Okay. Sometimes cases are even withdrawn because they would say that we want to rather settle the matter by way of local alert or we want to, we have settled the matter by way of arbitration, like that also parties would approach and say that we want to withdraw this case, which we have filed. That's also like a very common thing, okay? They would go to local alert or they would settle by way of arbitration or by way of like outside court settlement also, they can do those things also apply. This family cases will also be part of this category, right? Uh, cases. Family cases, yes, but we actually have a different legislation, Family Courts Act, and we have like separate courts for that. It is a part mm -hmm. of civil suit only, but then we have a separate court established. Okay. Family court, yeah, under Family mm -hmm. Courts Act. So there, things would be there. But yeah, civil CPC, some, some provisions here and there would apply, but again, some things might be different based on Family Courts Act also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because usually they the withdrawal uh, judge yeah. only would suggest for yeah uh, counseling <laughs> or <laughs> they would just convince right <laughs> somehow right yeah like they would call the husband once alone wife once alone and yeah. they would say all the good things like your husband said this 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 yeah. good things correct so yeah yeah mediation mediation yes. Then Supreme Court, okay, power of Supreme Court to transfer suits, etc. 
on the application of a party and after notice to the parties and after hearing now when an application is filed court would not like straight away transfer the matter because court needs to be on the other side also if there are any objections or something so they will issue a notice and hear the parties if any objections or something they would hear okay so when an application is filed after serving notice after hearing uh, such of them as desired to be heard the supreme court may at any stage if court is satisfied uh satisfied that an order under this section is expedient for the ends of justice in order to provide justice it is needed that this uh, case should be transferred then in such cases supreme court may order for transfer of suit appeal or other proceedings from a high court or other civil court in one state to one civil court or other uh, high courts of another say sometimes what may happen is it's just like two civil courts are having the jurisdiction okay it may be like within uh, karnataka only there are two civil courts and both of them are having jurisdiction okay in such cases we can approach the high court but what about if the high court of punjab and haryana is also having jurisdiction and Pan high court of karnataka is also having jurisdiction in such cases we need to go to a higher court right there we would go to supreme court we will file the case that it should not be tried by punjab and haryana high court rather karnataka high court should try the matter okay so in such cases we would go to supreme court same process notice will be served parties will be heard and then court will decide whether case should be transferred or not same ways here it's like high court will also have the power if there are like two subordinate courts having this thing okay so this may be at any stage if supreme court is satisfied that yes if the matter is transferred there it would be uh, for the ends of justice it's needed then supreme court would say that yes get this thing transferred so when a matter is transferred it may happen that in middle of the case it got transferred so in such cases the concerned court may continue from where it was left from what stage it got transferred or they may start with the very initial part only completely retry it here uh, the defendant is directly going to the supreme court and asking for uh transfer of the case which is running in the supreme court not supreme court it is running in high court of one state okay. maybe like karnataka high okay. court and punjab high court are having jurisdiction okay in such cases mm -hmm. they would be going to the supreme court or maybe mm -hmm. some lower court karnataka's uh, some city civil court and punjab city civil court there also they may go because it's a matter of two different states mm -hmm. oh, okay 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 so when case is being transferred it may be in middle of the case also so where it got transferred they can continue from that stage or they may start from the very beginning also that depends on them mm -hmm. now sometimes what may happen is a case was properly filed only okay falsely mm -hmm. a person has applied for transfer okay it was vexatious just in order to trouble mm -hmm. the other parties he filed an application in such cases if supreme court realizes that this was just to waste our time supreme court may even ask the parties to pay compensation okay order the applicant to pay compensation to any other person who was who opposed the application so it may go up to 2000 rupees of fine which may be imposed to the person who just falsely filed the case and wasted time of court recently for juhi chawla they had <laughs> find yeah yeah she had what was the matter i did not read purpose. it properly what was it okay uh she had filed uh, with respect to that 5g uh, yeah there are few companies who are into 5g uh, streaming right hmm. she had filed a case on the environment harms hmm. and uh, what happened was um, she had shared that Uh, hearing link uh, hmm. supreme court hearing link uh, uh, with her uh, media post okay 
and uh, thousands of viewers had joined and uh, they mm. had uh, uh, like on on her they were all her fans and they were disturbing the proceedings it's mm. mm. with various messages uh, and the uh, court said like uh, you have done this only for publicity mm-hmm. there was no real reason to go with the uh, uh, request mm. and uh, they asked her to pay the uh, compensation okay any idea uh, how much was the compensation it was very huge amount uh, in lakhs only 5 lakhs or something Okay. <laughs> yeah. Publicity only, no? Right? So much it was on right, news everywhere. Yeah. Uh, shared in the, uh, this one, media post only on mm-hmm. Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> the hearing link. Hearing link. That and I had the fans to join. <laughs> uh, not like it was recorded after that she shared also. <laughs> Everyone joined. Yeah, live was it. Open yeah. trial. <laughs> Correct. 20 lakhs ma'am 20 lakhs 20 <laughs> very good yeah. mm. right right good okay and even the uh, KSLU uh, case uh, was dismissed in supreme court few, few of the students supreme had, court also uh, they went yeah they had appealed in <laughs> supreme court i was not aware of this when okay i will share you that link Okay. Uh, Mostly it will be in Kannada, right? Like someone will share me some judgment link, something. It will be in Kannada. I don't understand that. No, no. This is no. This is some website link only. They have shared in the group. Okay. Right. I will share with that. They have slightly uh, dismissing that uh, students. Uh, they can't interfere in the university decisions mm-hmm. on exams. Mm. And uh, it was like this. Uh, December. This judgment came after that. They went. Is it? Uh, yeah, like Bangalore court allowed for exams, you know, against hmm. that they went to Supreme Court. Oh. Yeah, somewhere in December. Mm-hmm. Mm. Everywhere, same thing is happening, right? Like online classes only. They can't just say that, just promote us <laughs> without it. <Yeah>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the only thing is, uh, they should clearly tell at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And also, uh, the revaluation was not done, and they announced the exam results. Mm. All those were takes from university. Okay, and also exam got postponed too many times, also, right? Right, 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 right. Two times they postponed it, and mm-hmm. that's why they went with uh, saying that you promote us no mm-hmm. need of exam. Yeah. Already academic year uh, has lapsed. Yeah, and also when so much of protest and everything, people would feel like whether there will be exam or not, whether to study or not, those things also right. come with it. But how about other private university, ma'am? Uh, I think they had done a promotion, right? For I'm not very sure about like that. Like Christ University and all. So which they just did it based Christ. on the, Yeah. They did based on the assignment mode, it seems. Oh. That's why these people are saying many of the private uh, universities, hmm. they did uh, uh, for the uh, like intermediate semester, the promo- uh, promotion. Hmm. Why not uh, KSLU? Hmm. <laughs> but that should not be done, right? Assignments are like nothing to judge a person on. <laughs> <laughs> At least some right. objective type question or something they can set. Maybe. Right. right. And most are from outside Karnataka, KSLU students. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they from are not like some foreign country, country, UAE and all also people are joining KSLU. Right, right. right. <laughs> because of this all, online like classes, so much of flexibility, mm-hmm. I think that's the reason. There are people from, right. like outside the country also, international <laughs> university food, all, right? Right. Many yeah. students, right? 
for them coming and writing exam will be difficult and they also encourage the same mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> submit assignments after that when exam will be no surety right suddenly notification comes yeah. and there is exam correct? right right mm-hmm.